All right, troops, Yoko and Uni presents. Hello there, Valdo here. I haven't forgot about yous. I was just having a wee hiatus ere the Christmas holidays. Deco even got me some cream for my wee hiatus, so he really is a dafty, by the way. Right, so I wanted to kick off a new year with a pure dino beast in election on one of the things that Einstein was a pure legend for. Relativity. There are two things you need to pure know about relativity. One, smudge can he say the word right? Hey, I can it. Here we go. I tell you right. Relativity. What's wrong with that? Relativity. Two, Einstein didn't invent it. What he did pure duro was take all the bits and pieces for other buttons work care the years and stick them all together in a pure dino button way. Some buttons are good, some are even good at doing Sudoku puzzles. And then there is Einstein who is chieftain of the button race. So what is all this relativity crap then? Well I need to pure get your head straight on a few things first. There's a few things we can figure out if we Galileo Galilei and big Isaac of Newton. Galileo, or wee GGT's pals, was the punter the Pope stuck in jail for saying the Earth was near the centre of the universe. Or it might have been for singing the sash or something, I don't know. Dirty wee bigot. So pure combining GG and Big Isaac, then we pure get that relativity is all today with how he's pure view the motion of something else. Take a wee jester on a boat going along in the canal at Clyde Bank. He's pure juggling some boys. If you're standing pure next to him, then you need to question your life choices for a start. But also, you pure notice that the balls are going up and down, up and down, up and down. If you are standing on the side of the canal in the shopping centre at Clyde Bank, then you bit mind you know the pure minging brown bit with all the manky shops. We do have some class here in Yorker, by the way. If you have a swatch of your balls for the side now, then they're going up and down, they're pure going up and down in a parabola type shape, hangy. This means that your balls look like they fire about in different ways depending on where you're looking at them for. Here's something else to get in your head then. You go on a train at Yorker and you're heavy boosting up to town to go to Victor Morris for some mere air pellet ammo. Uh, I mean uh, fishing rods and that. Uh, you fall asleep for a bit and you wake up in some daft day punk the curtains in the windies in the train. There's heavy actual no way to tell if the train isn't moving or if it's moving at a constant speed. Even if it's going pure tonto through Partick day in about 200 mile an hour. Cause if you're dead still or moving at a constant speed in a straight line, then we call this an inertial reference frame. And it means that all physics all look and behave the same way. All Newton's laws and all that stuff will pure be the same. You can fling a ball up and down when the train is moving at a constant speed the same way as you could if it was not moving. The only way you could tell anything different is when you're accelerating or decelerating or going around the bend and that. So you're on a train and another train goes by you at the windy. Seeing this wee video here, how do you pure know what train is actual moving? So if you're moving at a constant speed, it pure feels to you like you're standing still when it's the other train that's pure moving by you. Or it might even be the lovely Yorker scenery that moves by your windy. Another one of trains is these two here. Both trains are travelling towards each other at a constant speed of 25 metres a second. When they pure pass each other, if you're sitting on one train looking at another one, you'll pure think you're doing 0 metres a second and it's the other one that's doing 50 metres a second gone by your windy. Same as the wee guy on the other train, pure giving you the vicky as he goes by you, he pure thinks he's doing 0 metres a second relative to him, and it's your train that's doing 50 metres a second relative to him too. What about the wee sad bottom train spotter sitting watching this amazing event unfold, eating his packed lunch on the wee bench? Relative to this wee saddle here, both trains are doing 25 metres a second but in opposite directions. The thing is though, who's right? They've all got heavy different answers by the way. Well, they're all pure correct. Relativity says that it all depends on where you're looking at things for. Nay but. But there is a problem, cause light is a wee stubborn bugger. Back in the old days and that, people knew that sound pure travelled in the air, so people thought light did the same thing, and no through air, like through some mad thing called the ether or something like that. Mental. The earth pure moves through this mad ether thing as it goes around the sun in space. So some mad buttons called Mickelson and Morley did an experiment. They've done well despite their disability having the arms and legs and body to use by the way. They said that light from a pure distant star travels to us at 300 million metres a second. The speed of light through this mad ether thing. The pure said in the summertime the earth is pure travelling towards this star through the mad ether. So it pure looked to us like light was reaching us a wee bit faster. In the winter time 
time the earth was on the other side of the sun and moving away from the star, so it looked to us like light was reaching a wee bit slower. What did they find? No, it didn't. They? they did air and air again, and other bottoms tried it too, and it always came back that light was the same speed all the time. <laughs> What's going on there? We Jimmy Clarko Maxwell tell us all this anyway, so he did. He pure said light pure travels 300 million metres a second, and that it always does. It's a pure cosmic old speed camera for the universe. But you can't turn this one with a spray paint like I did. Uh, I mean, my, my mental cousin Danny did with the speed cameras doing the Barton Road. Ain't enough of that. Uh, we Larry Lorenz the Apostle did some maths to help explain all this stuff but he said light was pure independent of all the other physics rules which is actually dodgy and total silver burns so in comes Einstein like a big man pure saying here what is the script by the way you are all pure barking I'll show you all exactly what's going on light pure follows all the same rules as everything else and if we Jimmy Maxwell says light is the same speed all the time then it pure is by the way speed is your length divided by your time so if you measure the same speed of light no matter how fast you move then your mad time and your mad length have to change to fit it so here is special relativity then that's pure Einstein's way to fit light and all Newton's physics and all that together. It's called special in the same way as my cousin Seng is a bit special where her 30 cats and come to bunk bed eyes. She isn't exactly the full shilling if you know what I mean. Special relativity is a pure easy version of Einstein's relativity theory. When all we need to think about are inertial reference frames or in non button words and that, all we need to think about are things that are moving at a constant speed in straight lines. General relativity is a beast. Our survey says, <coughs> No, the new big chat. Special relativity for the moment for us then. Let's have a wee look at one of Einstein's theoretical light clocks. There's a wee mad pulse of light firing up and down after mirrors at the top and the bottom. If it's pure stone and still next to you, then a wee pulse travels up and down at 300 million metres a second. Have a swatch at the clock if it's pure speeding across in front of you. The pulse is still going up and down, but just like the wee Jakey's bars on the boat at Clyde Bank, the light pulse has to go up and down at an angle. It pure looks like a triangle now, which means light has to travel further relative to how you are pure looking at it. So if time is pure the same, then it means that light has to travel faster to cover the distance you're looking at it for. Einstein said no. Nah. That's no right by the way. What actually happens is that time appears to slow down for the object that moves, so the length light travels will look longer from your point of view, but its time is slower, so the speed is still 300 million metres a second. We Alberto even said that objects that appear far at high speeds will look that they're shorter and all. These two things are called time dilation and length contraction. Or in Glasgow speak, if you're looking at something pure rapid firing along at high speed in front of you, then you'll think that their clocks are going slow and that they're pure squashed up. Einstein just ripped every scientist a new one, so he did. Capiche. <laughs> We Larry Lorenz wasn't out the picture though, turns out his mad math crap for all that ether rubbish was right fit for Einstein's button array. Relative velocity then is which speed you think something is doing for your point of view. This speed divided by the speed of light, which we call C, which stands for uh, speed of light in a hoover or something. Some punters call this your beta value. Lorenz pure had a wee transformation which he called the Lorenz transformation, which is some mad thing we pure call gamma. Here's a wee in my list of beta and gamma numbers. Time slows down or your seconds get longer with a wee factor of gamma, and length gets shorter with a wee factor of gamma too. If he's a pure rapid and fire lang at about 86% of speed of light, then people stand still think your clock is running about half the speed it should be, and that you look about half as thick as you should. <laughs> it's mental or what man? So now we come to a relativity paradox. A paradox is something that pure looks dodgy and just doesn't sound right in your head. A bit like people for Coat Bridge. There's pure hunters, but I like this one here because I know a couple of guys that pure did this. Bobby and Hugh McWalloper were known as the McWalloper twins. They were brainy buttons for Clyde Bank. The story goes that Bobby got on his spaceship, and I believe this is where the story might start to look a wee bit dodgy. He got on his spaceship called the Boulevard. He pure fired off the Earth at 99% of speed of light to a wee planet 7 light years away. A light you remember to use is the distance that light travels in one year in a straight line. If you kind of get that in your head then you are a dafty by the way. 
So we Bobby, pure ghost of the planet, buys Hunters a cigarettes in the duty free at like Gibraltar and then comes back. Cause he was pure fan about it, 99% of speed of light. It only took him 7 years there and about 7 years back. When he got back though, Hugh McWalloper was 14 years older, but we Bobby McWalloper was only 2 years older. What? Hugh thinks he was stunning still on air, so we Bobby's far away from him at 99% of speed of light, with a wee gamma number at about 7. Hugh thinks that Bobby's clocks are running 7 times slower, so 7 years for Hugh will be 1 year to Bobby. That includes Bobby's Casio watch and Bobby's biological clock. Bobby has only aged 2 years for Hugh's point of view. But on the Boulevard Rocket, Bobby thinks his clocks are running normal for him and he's like, he's like, here by the way, we go to the planet in one year, what's going on? I thought it was pure seven light year away, no one. But Bobby forgot that from his point of view, he was stunning still and the Earth was hefty shifting away from him and the planet shifting towards him both at 99% of the speed of light. So the whole distance between the Earth and the other planet would look about seven times shorter because of that mad length contraction stuff. Seven light year would purely look like one light year because it was moving fast relative to Bobby. That's how it only took him a year and no seven year to get to the planet and then only one year to get himself home so he pure only aged two years. This pure paradox isn't a paradox at all. Both McWalloper twins agree with each other cause of relativity. But the wee sneaky buggers amongst you all will say hold on wait a minute Bobby's clocks looked fine to Bobby but Hugh is on earth and he's boosting away from Bobby at 99% of speed of light. So surely Bobby would think Hugh's clocks are gone slow? Well no you need to pure remember though that only one of the twins was actual hefty shifting and that was Bobby. Hugh was just on and still so his clocks are gonna be fine. Try and keep up you man all right, try and keep up. So Bobby had a wee plan, he pure sent his bird Danielle away to the planet to get some more ciggies. When she returned, she was 12 years younger than Bobby. Ha ha ha, nice one Bobby, you wee sneaky boy. So here he's going in ya buttons, a wee bit of special relativity for yous to mess with your heads by the way. This actually does happen by the way, getting a fast plane of fire on the earth once or twice. When you get pure hem, your clocks will be a wee bit slow and you'll be a wee bit younger cause you were flying a wee bit closer to speed of light than everyone else was. Obviously though know, your clocks have to be super precise cesium beam atomic clocks Argos don't have a lot of them but never mind general relativity does say the higher you go the gravity gets less and your clocks speed up again but details we man details Einstein was the man a lot of his theories were pure dingy at first when he made them up but he's pure proof to be right over and over again all hail Alberto Einstein catch you Versace